Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to Midday Live on TV3 with me, Martin Nasiedu Dati. Coming up within the next one hour, we have stories making rounds in the country and around the world. Here are the top ones. Persons picked up by national security in a swoop yet to be charged will bring you an exclusive interview with one of the detained persons. Power Distribution Services PDS to continue managing operations of uh, power retail despite their suspension by the government. On the international front, demonstrators gather at Hong Kong's airport marking the start of three days of unauthorized rallies in the Chinese territory. Uh, starting from uh, the news that we all woke up to having to do with ECG and PDS. So the Electricity Company of Ghana, ECG, and the Power Distribution Services, PDS, have both agreed to uh, some modalities to ensure there is no disruption in power supply and service delivery in the country. As part of the modalities, both companies have agreed to allow PDS to carry on with all activities related to electricity retail sale. There is more in the following News Desk report. A joint statement signed by the managing director of ECG, engineer Samuel Boachiapia, and the CEO of Power Distribution Services, Reverend Engineer William Hatton Mensa, said PDS will be responsible for meter reading, billing, distribution of bills, bill reconciliation, revenue collection, and new service connections. PDS will also undertake disconnection exercises, replacement of faulty meters and networks, repair works, as well as attend to complaints and fault reporting to, call, to the call centers. The two companies in a statement further indicated that the, that the arrangements shall be in force from August 8 until the reversal or otherwise by the Energy Commission. The statement, however, comes on the back of the Finance Minister's directive for ECG to assume oversight responsibility of movement of funds to and from all accounts operated by PDS. The Finance Ministry said it was also facilitating the unfreezing of the accounts of PDS, but emphasized no staff of PDS is permitted to keep any cash or checks collected. And uh, we are working the lines to speak to some uh, authority on this issue to get some answers as to why or what then does the meaning of suspend mean if you're suspending the service to ECG, why are they being engaged on other uh, aspects? We'll uh, get you some further details on this particular story. Uh, before that, though, let's go to the seat of government because President Akufuado says government suspended the PDS agreement in the interest of the public and to protect the assets of the electricity company of Ghana, which is worth over $3 billion. The president was addressing the Ghanaian community in Angola as part of his visit to that country. Subsequently, we've discovered that some of the uh, financial instruments that the company put in place were not in order. And uh, as a result of that, we've had to suspend uh, the, the concession until all the facts are established. Uh, a fundamental part of the agreement required that the private sector operator put up a guarantee of to cover some $400 million worth of electricity supplies so that at any one time the bulk of electricity that is supplied to them, if for one reason or another they couldn't pay for it, they get the, 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 the ECG, i.e. the government, could draw down on the guarantee to protect uh, the handling of our assets. It turned out that there were problems with this guarantee so, uh, and, and that therefore the protection that we should have in the transaction wasn't really there. So the matters came to a head. We decided the first thing to do was to protect the public assets by suspending the participation of this private sector operator, returning the assets to the control of ECG, whilst a process of investigation was being carried out. Uh, earlier, two days ago, I sent a delegation to Qatar which was the origin of the guarantee 
to go and have a, to find out exactly what the situation is. They met them, uh, and they're on their way back to Ghana. By the time I get back to Accra tomorrow, they would have brought us a report. Then we'll know exactly where we are. But it was necessary for us to act in this manner, to protect the public interest, to protect the assets. The ECG assets are in excess of three billion CDs. <laughs> These are not assets that you can, you can, you can take lightly. So it's, um, it's important that the country understands that these in measures and initiatives were taken to, to, to protect the public interest and to make sure the potential uh, delinquency, if that's what turns out to be, was, was, was nipped in the bud as soon as possible. President Akufuado there. So we'll come back to this uh, story in, uh, while the bulletin rolls on. Away from that, drivers and commuters plying the boom, camp road to Michel Camp are concerned about its deplorable state. According to them, businesses in the area have been affected adversely due to roads, the road's bad nature. Elizabeth Owusu-Chuma reports the road is riddled with potholes. Motorists who ply the Punkam Road say they are disappointed at government's inability to rehabilitate deteriorated roads in the area. Some drivers who spoke to the news team claimed most of the roads constructed in the early 60s have not received any first lift. The road is extremely bad and it's affecting my car parts. The same road, yeah, yeah. The road has damaged my car parts. We use our daily sales to repair broken parts of the vehicle. Due to the poor state of the road, drivers have to exercise extreme caution to prevent their vehicles from being damaged. An hour's journey now makes more than two hours. The driver says several complaints to the Punkatamansu Municipal Assembly have not yielded any positive result. I've been living in this area for more than four years. I don't understand. I don't know who had this contract to do this road. This road has been really bad for four years or and even more than four years. This road is also a bypass to, to, to dodge the, the traffic on the Afienya Road. They use this road and, and join the Michel Camp 1. So I don't understand why they can't just do this road. The road has been like this for a very long time. Several complaints to authority have not yielded any results. They want the assembly to fix the road urgently. In other news this afternoon, the Minister of Works and Housing, Samuel Atachia, has directed the law enforcing agencies to arrest and prosecute house owners who fail to engage registered architects for their architectural designs. Speaking at the 19th induction ceremony of architects in Accra, the sector minister said the directive will bring sanity and discipline in the building industry. The building and construction industry represents about 25% of budgeted revenue and contributes about 6% of the country's GDP. Yet little support is extended to the industry in discharging its mandate, resulting in structural failure in buildings, slum development among other environmental deficiencies. The 1969 Architects' Decree and NLCD 357 has not been reviewed since its passage. The sector minister, Samuel Atachia, expressed government's determination to support the industry. We have the onerous duty to facilitate the creation of the requisite regulatory regime and environment to ensure that buildings are executed to standards that serve the needs of everybody in the society. The ministry in this regard and in collaboration with key stakeholders have developed and reviewed a number of policies, regulations and bills to support the sector. He said policies and programs have been adopted to arrest and prosecute house owners who fail to engage registered architects. Somebody believes that he has money and by reason of he having money, we just go and put together a structure. A building owner who does not use an architect should be sanctioned. The new regulation will capture that. 
The Registrar of the Architects Registration Council, Stella Atiaba, expressed concern over the numerous challenges confronting the council. The architecture profession is a very noble one, marked with the tireless responsibility of the well-being of the public. The architect services are needed in every area of society. We want to see more architects taking opportunities in the changing trends and demands of society contributing to governance and public service. In discipline and non-adherence to building codes, ethics, standards and effective supervision were some of the issues highlighted at this year's induction ceremony for newly registered architects. 29 architects were inducted. Let's go to some other stories now. Two clinical psychologists from the Ghana Police Service have met the father of kidnapped Prisla Mantibia Crunchy. The two met Mr. Crunchy on Thursday at his residence to offer him and two of his children words of encouragement in the midst of the news of discoveries of three human remains on Friday at the house of Samuel Wills. Mr. Crunchy shared highlights of the meeting with TV3 News. It's what the the experts have not arrived as yet. The team was, uh, I can say, psychologist. Yes. So, clinical psychologist. So, he came and then have uh, a discussion with us just to encourage us to maintain or to help us pass through all what we are going through. So, he just brought an, a word of an encouragement to me. Yes. But no DNA samples no, have no, been no, taken no, from it has you. not been taken yet. We move on to some other stories now. Over 6,000 Ghanaian pilgrims are currently pitching camp in Mina, Saudi Arabia, ahead of tomorrow's Arafah Day, which is the pillar of Hajj, and every pilgrim, every pilgrim is expected to be at Arafah. Let's go live on Skype and uh, speak to our correspondent, who is at Hajj himself, Tanku Mohammed Rabiu, who is currently in Mina. Uh, to tell us what exactly uh, the experience has been regarding the Ghanaians who are there and also the Hajj period. Hello, Tanko. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. Hello, Tanko. Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, I can hear you. Greg, uh, I want to find out from you, first of all, what is the readiness level uh, for the pilgrims as you journey, you prepare to journey to Arafah tomorrow? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Currently, we are at uh, Mina, as you mentioned, uh, we are fixing camps uh, in Mina ahead of tomorrow's uh, event. Uh, tomorrow's event uh, is the most uh, important part of Hajj, that is the, uh, that is the Arfa, which is the pillar of uh, All the Nepalians have been conveyed to Mina here. Uh, what is uh, there for people? It's a uh, ritual where every person is supposed to be If you are not at Arfa, it means you are not it means you are you are accepted. Uh, whether you are sick or whatever situation you find yourself, you will be at Arfa. But I have with me the deputy communication director of the Ghana Hard Board, Ad Yasu, uh, who will share uh, with our viewers uh, uh, how, uh, how far they have gone in preparing uh, the frigates uh, to this important place, Mina. So, I'd like to tell us more about the preparation towards Mina and then tomorrow. What are we expecting tomorrow? Alhamdulillah, I can say without any fear of doubt that all prospective frigates from Ghana are, are here in Mina uh, in readiness for the all important day of Arafat tomorrow. Uh, in Mecca here, and inshallah, as far as professions are concerned, here in Mina we have a mini clinic, clinic whose duty it is to prescribe solutions to yeah. eating problems regarding health issues. Um, there shall be another clinic in Mina um, Arafa tomorrow, and there shall be another mobile clinic to complement the efforts of the mini clinic in Arafa. Uh, as far as the task force are concerned, 
they are ensuring that they reach our camp of all infiltrators who, who are not supposed to be a part of the camp. And uh, inshallah, they are ensuring that provision of food in abundance is the order of the day so that all pilgrims will be comfortable. The temperature here is, 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 is very hot mm. and there is enough water, provision of water and enough provi provision of snack for the consumption of the uh, hujai. Right. Uh, them to have the peace of mind, to concentrate on the ibadah, various ibadahs that they are all performing here. So I, on the part of the Hajj board, I can say, inshallah, Rabbi, as far as preparations are concerned, we are all in the preparations and everything is in place. Everyone is excited. The prospective presidents are excited that they are all here finally to continue uh, the, the all important day of Arafah, which, which is what has brought us here. Uh, uh, to throw more light on the Arafah, the Imams or the uh, good books, which is the whole. Uh, I apologize for the the transmission the breaking transmission there but then uh, you had um, the deputy um, communications director of the national Hajj board there with our correspondent uh, telling us how the Ghanaians that have gone to Mecca are faring and the preparations they've put in place to make sure that everybody is in good condition as they journey on to experience or to partake in this all-important event under the Islam calendar. Uh, we'll definitely go back to our correspondent in our subsequent bulletins to get an update on that. Uh, let's swing straight to the Ashanti region now. Driver of the Indian gold buying company, whose workers include their CEO, were arrested in a national security operation and uh, he has recounted his ordeal in the hands of the national security operative. 61-year-old Charles Osei, Kumesh Kathria, CEO of Ria Minerals Company Limited, and two others were arrested on Wednesday uh, in a dawn swoop. Driver of the company in um, an exclusive interview with Komla Kluche, my colleague, says no charge has been preferred against them two days after their arrest and subsequent release. You would also recall that armed men from the National Security uh, Office picked up four Indian businessmen and two Ghanaians believed to be gold dealers in a dawn operation at Ahuju in the Ashanti region. Komla Kluche has been speaking exclusively to one of the men arrested. So the BNI and national security under a special operation on Wednesday arrested four Indians and two Ghanaians in an operation uh, they deemed to crack down on some alleged uh, gold buying syndicate of the sort we are not too clear of but well it's established that the four Indians were arrested and two Ghanaians inclusive this is their driver uh, he tells us uh, the harrowing story or the experience he went through, what exactly the accusations are and what ordeal they went through in the hands of the BNI. Uh, Chief, mm -hmm. you're welcome to TV today. Now, I'm tell us your name. I'm Charles Ose. No, Charles, uh, when were you arrested? What was your crime? Mm, Wednesday morning. Now, I'm at the Yeah, me. Me need the phone here, man. Me me driver. I will company him. Me go walk early in the morning. Into me buy, you know. Me do a few in entrance, you know. No man who say two cars, a pack or two pickups, one white and one blue black. Na fire service for two officials. No man who saw me join him or. The name crime is since said if if you need jabi, I buy one in Africa one man. Until some is free, me care, man. I me yes, I me ref you, man. No, no say. Me yet there with you, me yet there with you. I know me a driver to the company. Into me, I say me come here. I'm saying no. On my mind, come baby, I'm eating. No, on my so me, on my day, come baby, I'm in the afternoon, eating. Because if you know, so yeah, we be out on the banglo, banglo. Into I'm them come baby, I'm in the afternoon, eating. Oh, oh no. If I'm come home, say my wife, and then me baba, you know, say on my day, on my, I come home. And if you have phone, you pay two, you know. Into me, but I said there somewhere. On my to me, I can't hear answer me. So on my special here on my bar, on my special operation. Into one more, I said, sir, or be in front of formula, or be in front of formula. 
after that na brass na e hono so yanso ye ye banglos no ono be sechi ho nyina ono mo nya bibibia amom charge until later na officer ba ko ka kire mse ono mo di fi ho cars na e hono ba two e be ba akra into me ka ho amia ba na nko fa atade e she to fa atade e she mi mi sense se be driver there mi me ka ka no ba ko no ya ba e do see e be boss no ka no ma me nka into no mi mi tena ka na echi na nko tena ka na echi no ono mo drive from kumasi to be an office, a eh, uh, officer smells. Eh, to be drawn, you know, on more year on doc documentary, a eh, union, you know, no, no, dear call sales near that home, my dear chin. To a dear chin, you know, and now around there one or two more, no more by no be ye. A eh, dear call office or say one more could tear your new assem. No, sir, so, dear call, be an eye, a walk out could be area hono. No, on more friend, bako bako bako. Let me ask you, for how long have you worked with a company? About three years. Three years or three and a half years. You work with a company for about three and a half years. Yeah. And like you said, you are a driver. But do you know whether they have the license to deal in gold? I no. I do I know. 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 I na minim on mo se e bia ye twamu ana se renew ana se e bia problem bi wo ad and they don't know for now mm -hmm. uh, what charges have been preferred against you minim charge bi onum dia boy until se e bia monday no ye kwa eh uh, onum ba kuma sin ra no krata on mo ye on ye obi bi on mo de ma me eni minim charge kro because i don't know me me hear e yi no no on mo antre any charge on it and, and this is the, so so this is just a paper no indication uh, on it that this is an official document it's only uh, with the inscription change of custody form and then the first inscription on it is uh, i think is the abbreviated nscs which should probably be, probably be national security uh, slash bnc slash iif uh, then case number there's nothing the item number nothing description of content one oppo android uh, small phone okay so uh, uh, these are the things they took from him uh, allegedly maybe this is just to indicate that this is uh, these are the items they took from him and then description of offense there was there's nothing there uh, suspect's full name Charles or say suspect signature there is a signature and there's a thumbprint evidence of collection B and C and that is so there's absolutely nothing and this was witnessed by one Nitty Hill Nickel Indian okay so they say that Nickel Nickel and and uh, the Nickel is who? He's a staff of the company. Or any in the Yajuma. Nickel is a staff of your yeah. company. One more trace, sir. No one, my staff, no back on. I a witness. No means my witness in the care, no dear. Okay, so these are items that they took from you. Yeah. They only took your phone from yeah. you yeah. and all that. Yeah. But no charge has been no, preferred no, no, against no, no, you yet. No, no, but, no, but, 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 but. But this has been since Wednesday. Have you been speaking to your lawyers? What are your lawyers saying? Okay. Me ni uh, until say me junior brother and also a fat lawyer, Amma me because case in this year, your call honum no. Nam person me your call. Amma me ni anum ni me wife when you know who say, Baby say, and no baby dear bet. Me ni phone, obi answer mess re no no. Or mammy, a yin say, or dinner phone, be mammy amma, made the number be amma na fre. Into me or her until say, eh, uh, me ba, me ba gay no, and eh, me junior brother no one moti. Nature say, me junior brother and so a coffer lawyer, Amma company no. Actually, no, I really no company so say on my for on my lawyer. Mm. You know, so say you come in lawyer and I'm a junior brother. And then you say, I say, on also a person who share being I ho. No, I just me ban and me wife no. The phone no. I'm on Monty. Me see me train me me director or ba. And sign up my friend no. The story as it is now quite a bit harrowing as it is. Uh, not much detail is known though. And this is a company. The driver or Charles tells me that has been in existence or have been in operation for a while, but uh, they do not understand the reasons for which they were arrested. Nonetheless, for him, 
and then they remain resolute to cooperate with the BNI to come to the bottom of this matter, even as no charge as it stands now has been preferred against them. Komla Kluge, TV3 News, Accra. Let's subject this development to some analysis and uh, bring in Adam Bona, who is a security analyst. Uh, he's joined us via Skype. Richard Kumado is also on phone and will be also giving us his perspective on that. He's a fraud and security uh, consultant. So, Mr. Bona, let me start with you. Thank you for making time to speak with us on this. There seems to be a recent increase in the activities of national security operatives. Is it a sign to show that they are really working or there are real concerns that they are dealing with that in this time it is becoming more public and the media is getting to know about it? Hello, Mr. Bonner, can you hear me? Hello, Mr. Adam Bonner. Unfortunately, um, we are unable to connect with uh, Mr. Adam Bonner. I think we are having a challenge with the, with the connection there, but we'll do well to uh, get him to share good, his good thoughts on this. But, good uh, afternoon, Richard. And, uh, but for me, I don't want... Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you here. Yes, yes I can hear you. All right, so you can continue. I think there's a delay in the in the connection, but do continue. All right. Um, clearly, the, the delay in the submission from me to Mr. Bona is quite uh, lengthy, hence the inability to connect properly. But um, we also do have um, Richard Kumado uh, on the line, and uh, he's a consultant, fraud and security consultant, and a former BNI operative. Mr. Kumado, good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. Is this soup normal, uh, looking at what we have picked up so far, and the fact that it seemed to have been a monitoring operation for some time before the final picking up was done. And the fact that they had to move them from the Ashanti region to the, uh, to the greater Accra region before investigations and interrogations were done. Is this normal or standard practice? Yeah, uh, persistently and gradually, we are deviating from that procedure. Uh, that is to say that we cannot have people dispensation of rule of law running around the city, we don't know who they are, we don't know their portfolio, or we know that they are from national security. I think we are in the dispensation of rule of law, and we can do much better than what we are seeing now. So it's a little bit of a deviation, but I'm praying and hoping that we will get back to the drawing board and let the standard procedures work, Martin. We, there are times we are actually not too clear on what the role of the national security should be. Some say that they are supposed to just gather intelligence and then tell the police officers, and then the police officers can go in and, uh, you know, uh, effect an arrest. But this time around, national security operatives are arresting people, uh, not just now, but then they've been, is that part of their mandate? So when you look at the act, that set up the national security, this is alien to the act, and you go back to Emily Short, Ayawaso, you saw the contradictions and the mess up we have. It is also the problem because of the structure we are having in this country. And then again, we are having national security. The rule of national security is not even to arrest. National security is like the Pentagon. That is a strategic and a coordination center. You have the BNI, your intelligence community in this country, and you have the police who has the mandate of ensuring that it assists. So those days, even when the BNR has a standard procedure, the BNR has the arresting power, but they hand over the suspects to the police, and they, we even engage the some of the arrests we do. I believe the BNI, the police in Ashanti region, has the capacity. And even when it becomes so necessary that national security must engage in this particular operation, they have no business keeping the suspect in their domain with the overnight. When and the people of this report where they are and we are hearing that they have released the people without charge i believe we are breaking the 
and it is time we behave properly. Mm, and, and that stems to uh, the next concern that we have, the fact that they've been taking for at least or more than 24 hours and no charges were leveled against them. How does this play in security settings? Is this, uh, no, we, is are that also? Through, uh, we are breaking the laws and I believe these guys who have access to legal representation, they, can't, they, can, they can try it at the Supreme Court. Because this is not a standard procedure. We have laws. We have to be seen as people who are law-abiding, especially when we have people who know the law and know exactly what to do. When you get into the BNI, for yes, National Security has a Harvard lawyer who is a chief legal advisor of National Security. And I don't believe that my big brother sitting in that position will want the law to be. It can happen to anybody. We can have people arresting we in our homes. We don't know... We don't know their portfolios, they occupy in national security, and we don't know their faces. I think that without charges and keeping us somewhere and releasing us without charges, I think it's becoming too bravado and machoism is setting in. And this thing must stop. Otherwise, we are all empty of these guys occupying positions in national security, which is against the rules of the law. All right, uh, I'll be bringing in Mr. Bona now, Mr. Adam Bona, who is um, also a security consultant, for him to uh, help us understand what uh, we as a nation can do regarding the, the issue. So when we, we before we, we go to Mr. Bona, uh, Richard, clearly from what is happening, what can the citizens do when the state security apparatus is, like you put it, breaking the law? What can the citizen do? It's a worrying sign. It's a worrying situation. Every, you can understand the public agitation and the euphoria. We, this is alien to us. When you do so, you are, creating, uh, you are creating chaos in the public domain. And the civilians who take the laws into their hands. Now, people are arming themselves, and you should not be when they have a confrontation of anybody who claims to be a national security operator as an identity and a portfolio. That is my fear, and that is my worry. And a lot of people are worried. People are worried this whole country. It's a concern of every citizen, and we must get back to the center and do things properly. It's a problem, and this is alien to us in this country called Ghana. Okay. Now, just hold on for me. Let me go to Mr. Bona now. I'm sure the connection should be better. Mr. Bona, uh, good afternoon, if you can hear me. The concern has been the fact that in recent times, there seem to be seem to be uh, to uh, the there seem to have been an increase in the activities of the national security operators the recent one being the arrest of six persons in the ashanti region transported to the greater Accra region with no charge where should we be concerned as a people what do you uh, what's your take on this Right, um, clearly the, the, this is, uh, technology sometimes can play tricks on you, but uh, Mr. Adam Bonner uh, was bailed to speak with us and uh, clearly we seem to be having a challenge with uh, connections. But I uh, would want to say a big thank you to both gentlemen. Um, Richard Kumado is a fraud and security consultant helping us uh, put into better perspective the development in the Ashanti region. Also, uh, we had Mr. Adam Bonner, but unfortunately we could not pick his thoughts on this development. This is still Midday Live on TV3. Stay with us, we'll be back with more. All right, uh, let's do business now. The National Cyber Security Advisor, Dr. Albert Inkiboy Siako, says government's decision to protect the cyberspace through the increment in the communication service tax should be supported. According to him, the cyberspace is at risk as cyber criminals carry out fraudulent activities causing havoc in various financial activities in the country. According to the Cyber Crime Unit of the Ghana Police Service, 
Ghana lost $105 million last year through cybercrime such as mobile phone fraud, various forms of intrusion and extortion. The justification for the increment in the communication services tax by the finance minister, Ken Furiata, is to safeguard Ghana's digital infrastructure by protecting the cyberspace and world of criminals. The National Cyber Security Advisor, Dr. Albert Entribusiago, said it is a very important move by government which, if diligently pursued, will protect state institutions and individuals. Businesses are losing and there has been individuals who have lost money through their transaction with the banks, email facilitated fraud. I have instances which SMEs, small businesses, with capital sometime in less than 50,000 USD, cyber attack and they lose their whole capital. He added many people are vulnerable to social engineering, which means many do not cross-check sources and the mode of fraud which gets internet users defrauded. Almost every child uses a digital device either for research, either for social interactions. Now there are risks with respect to what they assess on the internet, the content. There is a risk with the contact, the people that they meet on social media. There is even a risk with their own behavior that ought to be found in to protect this most vulnerable group. Finance Minister Keno Furiata announced an increment in the tax from its current 6% to 9%. Uh, in other business news this afternoon, a principal program officer of the ECOWAS Free Movement Directorate, Dr. Tony Luca Elumelu, is advocating the removal of borders within the ECOWAS subregion. In his estimation, no amount of cooperation and collaboration can enhance free movement with the artificial borders still in place. Dr. Tony Elumelu was speaking at an advocacy and sensitization campaign on free movement and migration. The objective of ECOWAS is to promote economic trade, national cooperation and monetary union for growth and development throughout West Africa. It was established with a stated mission to promote economic integration across the region on May 28, 1975 with the signing of the Lagos Treaty. A revised version of the treaty was agreed and signed on July 24, 1993 in Cotonou. The stated goal is to achieve collective self-sufficiency for member states by creating a single large trade block by building a full economic and trading union. However, implementation of the various terms and conditions are shrouded in controversies and rivalries. A principal program officer at the ECOWAS Free Movement Directorate, Dr. Tony Luca Elumelu, recounted a number of challenges impacting the successful implementation of the good intentions. If a Nigeria comes here and commits crime, don't say, oh, it's a Nigerian. If it's to go for jail for three years, jail him. If a Togolese, a Ghanaian goes to another country and commits crime, that he ought to be jailed, he should be jailed. The law. We should separate security issues and address security matters holistically. Support them from migration. He maintained the removal of the artificial borders are key in facilitating free movement and migration. It's easy for an elephant to pass through the eye of a little than for it to pass through the border. And they're not friendly and it's not good. The most secured nations are not the most checkpoints. That's it for business on Midday Live. We Time for entertainment news. Now, Ghana, Ghanaian actor and politician John Dumelo says he will not hang his acting boots if given the nod by delegates uh, to go to parliament. The popular actor was speaking to Johnny Hughes on TV3's New Day. People with popularity, as we've seen in the past, get into parliament and we don't hear them speak, we don't hear them talk about anything, they are there. <laughs> They just joined the chorus, yeah, yeah, no, no. <laughs> I, I mean, I feel that people with popularity, it doesn't matter if you have popularity or not. Can you do the job? Yes. Okay. Can you not do the job? No. I mean, but if you have popularity, the onus, the onus lies on you to deliver. Okay. That's the truth of the matter. Mm. You have to deliver because if you don't deliver, all eyes are on you. 
So if you go to parliament and you don't speak, if you go to parliament and you're just a lame duck, if you go to parliament and you just say, yeah, yeah, no, no, people will say, ah, but well, we've given you the mandate to okay. go and speak for us. Mm -hmm. You're just there. You're not doing anything. Four years, you would come back and you ask the people to vote for you and you have to be accountable. And so I don't think I'm going to go to parliament and just, just keep quiet. What happens to your acting career if you get elected into parliament? Are you going there, to hang your there, boots? There, there are so many parliamentarians who still practice law. There are so many parliamentarians who still practice medicine. Mm -hmm. And so and so me going into parliament, of course, there will be one or two times where I'll still offer advice um, in the acting industry. Mm -hmm. And maybe, maybe, I mean, I can just still do one or two because it's part of me. Okay. It is acting that has made me who I am. And so it will be very um, unfair to say, okay, I'm hanging my boots in mm -hmm. acting. And besides, you don't, certain, certain um, careers, you just don't hang your boots. Okay. There's always an aspect of it that follows you in life. Are you going to be in parliament forever? No, I don't know. As in like a Mugabe kind of no, thing? No, no, We've no. seen people no. six, seven terms. No, no, How no. many terms are you looking at? Well, it all depends on the on the delegates. It all depends on the constituents. If, okay. if I'm working hard and they feel that they need to re-elect me if after every four years, they will re-elect me. But if, if they feel that, John, you're not doing well, let, let's vote you out. But then, what, 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 what plan are you getting in there? Two terms, three terms? God will decide. God will decide. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, the Medina district of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana witnessed soul-lifting musical performance as selected choirs, uh, choir groups within the vicinity came together to stage the 2019 ecumenical praise. The musical carnival was initiated to congregate churches and other faiths within Medina to praise God on the theme, My Worship. Christians and non-Christians thronged the venue, the Medina Presby Church, to be part of the live musical experience. Whilst praising God for his mercies and divine favor, the occasion was also to foster peace and unity among the various groups. The Medina District Presby Masqua set the ball rolling, charging the theater with songs that gingered the audience to dance their hearts out. <laughs> The show witnessed performances from the Christ Apostolic Church Choir, Faith Community Baptist Church Choir, Community Bible Church, Medina Presby Church Choir and a host of others. It was a night of enthralling stage performance and patrons yielded in admiration, pouring out their hearts in adoration. Emmanuel Frimpong Sechi led the planning team for the 2019 Ecumenical Praise. The purpose of this program is to bring all the churches together under one umbrella so that we can praise the name of the living God. It's a way to consolidate the unity, it's a way to promote cooperation, it's a way to bring oneness and the love that we have. MP for the Medina constituency, Honorable Boniface Abubakar Sadiq, was the guest of honor. What Medina people have done, something that is encouraging and I'm also inviting them to use this platform to let other people emulate them because this it brings togetherness and it is the source of peace so you see that it brings some kind of bondage friendship and love and that's it for the bulletin it came your way from our studio here at Adesawe in Accra thank you very much for watching there is more news on our website 3news.com my name is Martin Asiedu Date. Do have a good afternoon as always. Stay positive. Enjoy your weekend. Bye for now.